So implied domain. Um, so we're if we're thinking about domain specifically, uh, or as we understand domain, that's the set of values uh, usually uh, attributed to the the variable x. They are the independent independent variables or independent values or independent yeah variables values um, x usually the horizontal axis uh, oftentimes most often time is associated etc with the domain um, most of the time if you're given a function you're told explicitly what the domain is for that function other times you're not uh, and it's assumed that we kind of start out with all real numbers, but then the implied domain is when you're is is the idea of a implied domain is typically when you're not explicitly told what the domain is. And so if you're given a function like this, f of x equals three x plus seven, and that's the exact exact sam, uh, example I used in a previous video. This we know is a line. And so it looks something like this. Its graph is this purple thing, uh, something like this. And we can look at it and realize that this goes forever in this direction, which means in the domain, it, it, it's gonna keep going left as we go down. And this will keep going right as we go up. Um, that's kind of a backwards thinking because you're applying the y to the x and really we're applying a function to the values of x. But this will keep going out to x equals infinity and y equals negative infinity. And so it covers all real numbers. So our, our domain for this function is that. And that's almost always what we assume unless we're told otherwise or unless the function implies that there is a restriction on the domain. So here are some examples of that occurring. And uh, let's look at this function. So f of x equals uh, 5x minus the square root of 3 minus x. If I just look at this singular x, no matter what x value I put in, whatever, no matter what value I put in there for x, whatever real number I put in, this term will always be a real number. If I put 7 in, I get 35. If I put negative 2 in, I get negative 10. If I put pi in, I get 5 pi. Those are all real numbers. And so it's not a problem on my Cartesian coordinate plane specifically the real plane. And so domain restrictions come about when, if I put a value in for x, an independent variable value, and out comes a non-real number. So if, an, if the output ends up in the non-real plane, I can't plot it on the real plane. It's not a real number. And that's where we get these restrictions. So when would that occur? Because we have the square root thing in here, that causes a problem. So we'll look at that specifically. Let's put the value 3, x equals 3 in. f of 3 equals 5 times 3 minus the square root of 3 minus 3. And we get 15 minus the square root of, what's 3 minus 3? 0. What's the square root of 0? 0. And 15 minus 0 is 15. So f of 3 equals 15. Is this a real number? Yes, so you can plot that number, 3 comma 15, and we're all set. You can plot it on the real plane. What if I put in, what was my function again? 5x minus square root of x mi uh, 3 minus x, right? 3 minus x, yep. Uh, 3 minus x. I might want to change the color because that purple is kind of tough to see, I think. So um, what if I substituted in the number 4? So let's figure out what f of 4 is. 5 times 4 minus the square root of 3 minus 4. And what's going to happen is I get 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And guess what? The square root of negative 1 is an imaginary number. Or more importantly, it's not real, which means I can't plot it in a real plane. And so 4 should not be part of our domain is not in our domain. And even though you weren't told that, we can sort that out. And so the function implies to us that four is not part of our domain. What about, 
3.5. Well, if we just look at this little part here, 3 minus x, if I put a number in here, like 3.5, I'm going to get a negative number, right? And so what can't x be? So you could sort that out. This one's pretty easy. But another way to look at it is if I'm looking at my original function, oops, that was x minus the square root of 3 minus x, I know that this particular function has this area that's problematic. This is not. And so I can take the, whatever's inside the square root, for example, and that portion must be greater than, meaning it has to be a positive number, or equal to zero. It cannot be a negative number. And so I can easily then find out for this expression, when is it going to be greater than or equal to zero? I'm going to add x to both sides. And I get 3 is greater than or equal to x. Or, as I told you in class, always read from the variable, x is less than or equal to 3. And so for all values where x is less than or equal to 3, then this function will work. If the number is greater than 3, we're going to have a problem. And so this function is not defined, or is only defined for the domain x is less than or equal to 3. And if we were to write that in interval notation, we would write uh, less than or equal to 3. I can have all these numbers going down to negative infinity, and I can, call away, come, I can go all the way to the right up to and including 3, and so I get this square bracket. Now, second example, a different kind of function that implies a restricted domain. And so that would be something like this. I have some function g of x equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus 1. So we've talked about it, if whether in lab or in class. We do not understand what it means. It has, has no meaning to us. Uh, in some cases it might, or we can extrapolate the, uh, some meaning. But if I take a number, 17, and divide it by 0, we do not know what that, un we, we don't understand what that means. So the meaning of this is undefined. And mathematically, undefined means that we're, people say you can't divide by 0, and I'm saying you can, but it results in an, an, an idea that's undefined. So we need to find out when this is equal to 0 because for those values of x that cause this denominator equal 0, that will not be part of our domain. So how do we do that? We take x squared minus 1, set it equal to 0, and we can solve for x to determine what values create a denominator of 0. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I'm going to have x squared equals 1. I'm going to take the square root of both sides, which means I have x equals plus or minus 1 because both 1 and negative 1 will make this equation true. So that means this function, g of x, has a, restrict, has a domain that's all real numbers, but x cannot equal negative 1 and 1. And a much cleaner way to write that is an interval notation. That would go from negative infinity all the way out to infinity, but I can't include negative 1 and 1. So this left is going to include negative 1. This one is going to include 1. But we have a little issue. What about 0? Zero? 0 would work. 0 squared is 0 minus 1. I have negative 1. So I have a denominator not equal to 0. Because there are a bunch of numbers in between negative 1 and 1 that we want to include. And so if I have this set, this set, and this set, how do I include all three of those? Take the union of those three sets. And so that's interval notation for that second example. Hopefully that helps you with implied domain. Take care. Bye.